Cool, so where do we start? Well, Chris, I know that you're not new to big game hunting, but <laughs> some of our young hunters, you know, one of the questions is, when do you have to tag your animal? When do you have to void it? Uh, different states have different rules in South Dakota, just states that you don't have to actually physically tag this animal until you bring it out to a road, put it on a truck, uh, put it in a four-wheeler. Frankly, I'm just used to that when I make a kill, after I've taken my photographs, uh, after I've taken my photographs, before I take it apart, I'm going to go ahead and, and acknowledge that I've killed my animal, and I'm going to sign it, and uh, it is October, and it's the 27th. And at this point, I'm just going to hold on to this because I'm going to do a process here and then put this on. Now we'll get on with our process here. A couple of things I'll just mention while we're working on this is that since I'm going to transport this from the back country and get it to the vehicle, as far as transporting the animal and the carcass, you know, back home and back to mm -hmm. town, the only things that we really have to leave evident are the sex of the animal, whether it's a doe or a buck, and also uh, whether if you have a specific whitetail only license, we need to leave we need to leave uh, something that is going to show the the sex, but also the the species, whether it's a whitetail sure. or mule deer. So since we know we're going to take this cape and antlers, uh, we're not going to have to actually leave evidence of sex because we're going to be taking the carcass meat with the cape and uh, we'll have a you know our portion of our rear quarter tagged mm -hmm. but we're going to show the viewers how to leave the evidence of sex cool in the event uh, that they didn't have to satisfy one of those things sure okay so we're going to cape this animal and your first cut is you're going to follow down the spine here and this is going to make it a lot easier you want a sharp knife and you don't want to keep pulling the knife blade out and making jagged cuts. So I'm, I've got a good sharp knife and I'm just going to go along the back of the spine like that. That's my first cut. The second cut is going to be to start here from the corner of the elbow and where the two different colors of hair come together, the tan and the white. We're going to follow this area, area along. Now right here, instead of cutting into the armpit, which will ruin your cape, we need to cut straight back in this fashion. We need to go back here. Once we've done that, from the armpit we're going to stay back six, eight inches. Something else I want you to take notice of is that you're not going to get as much hair all over the carcass if you're always cutting blade up from the underside. If you're cutting straight down, you're going to dull your knife blade quicker and you get a lot of hair. And now from this point, we're going to start skinning this animal back, being careful not to cut the cape of this buck. The neck is going to get quite a bit tighter because there's not as much fat in this area and so you're going to have to uh, be a little bit more careful. If you end up leaving some meat on the cape, that's just fine. I'm just pulling. Now with this cut that I made up to here, you're basically going to make this cut all the way around the bed. Now at this point, we can get the brisket meat here and the neck meat and keep it on this shoulder if we want to. Um, if we keep it on there, it's easier to hang. It's easier to hang quarters with bone in. But if you're a long ways back and you want to take the meat off this bone, you're going to save yourself potentially five pounds in bone weight. Over the course of four quarters, that's going to equal almost 20 pounds of meat. You know, portions of game meat that are edible here that we need to make use of. Um, 
by all means it's the four quarters of tenderloins and the loins in the back brisket meat uh, if you'd like to lower shank meat off the legs if you would choose to um, also you know a lot of times if you make a shot that hemorrhages a lot of the you know portions of this you want to remove that stuff you don't want to put in the hemorrhaged bloody areas you know in with your good game meat in this case this deer was hit by a car and so far we got lucky uh, <clears throat> evidenced by what you can see here now once we get into this rear quarter this probably isn't going to be so pretty looking okay and this... legally Jeff we don't it, so it, say somebody doesn't make the best first shot on a deer hits it in the rear really makes a mess out of that hind quarter they legally don't have to pack that out no if you if you happen to hit a game animal in an area that hemorrhages a large portion of it I would I would cut around that and that's not something that you have to take with you the greatest cool. thing about taking your animal apart uh, in the field is that right now we've already begun the cooling process if we would have left this hide on this animal and got it back to a pickup and then drove across the state at 50 degrees uh, you your animal would still be probably 70 degrees when you got home it might take even a rear quarter like this if I if I took the hide off of it and then exposed it to the air that it is right now maybe it's about 50 degrees now it's gonna take 8 or 10 hours before it drops from 100 degrees down to 50 that's a long time once you've taken this you know when the hide is on you're no longer releasing heat out of the animal and so by taking the hide off it's starting to cool now the other thing is obviously you will have some loss because this is going to dry up this nice hard seal though is something that you want because it makes it easy to clean any residual hair off keep your meat cold keep it dry and keep it clean it's going to be fantastic table fare